the Midas Touch Network freshman pro-democracy member of Congress of the Year goes to Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz. Let's take a trip down memory lane and take a look at Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz just absolutely crushing MAGA Republicans at the various committee hearings during this year. Let's start off with the uh, hearing held by the MAGA Republicans earlier in the year on Hunter Biden's laptop. Congress member Moskowitz, play the clip. Let's talk about Twitter. Let's talk about God bless Elon Musk. See these? God bless the guy who is allowing Nazis and anti-Semitism to perpetrate Twitter. It's been a 66% increase of anti-Semitism on Twitter since Elon Musk set it free. Mr. Chairman, I agree with you. It's not fair to say all conservatives are Nazis. That's preposterous. That's not true. But your Lord and Savior Donald Trump is having tea and dinner with them at Mar-a-Lago. Nick Fuentes right here, who is a picture that is tweeted at me all the time saying Jews are a virus in response to my tweets. Donald Trump's having dinner with him. Nazis at Mar-a-Lago. And so, no, not all Republicans are Nazis, but I got, I got to tell you, Nazis seem really comfortable with Donald Trump. So I have questions about that, Mr. Chairman. Why is that? Why do I get these tweets? Let's talk about Kanye West, right? The chairman of the Judiciary Committee for three months praising Kanye West. We love Kanye, right? A Nazi, clearly now. It took months for that tweet to come down. How come? I mean, these are things I'd love to know. Is it because maybe they're your voters? I mean, they certainly aren't voting for me. I yield back. And Congress member Moskowitz was not done there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I, I, I'm beginning to, I, I'm getting to feel like a little bad for the majority. Like I, I, I just feel guilty because you guys have come today to try to prove that the Biden administration in coordination with Twitter is impeaching, <coughs> impugning free speech. And the problem is, is that Donald Trump, he, he is just this thing that hangs around your neck. Because at every turn, he undermines whatever credibility you want to have on this subject. I mean, Donald Trump and his administration it's been proven, reached out to Twitter to take down tweets that got under his skin. The tough guy, Donald Trump, right? He got called the B word. Let's reach out to Twitter. Let's get the tweet taken down. You guys have no credibility. You have none. Your own guy taking free speech off of Twitter. You know, I also don't understand this bipolar thing that you're doing with Joe Biden. So. Every day you guys tweet out, Joe Biden is boring, he's sleepy. Every day you say it on TV. Now you want to tell the American people Joe Biden is an international super mastermind along with his son Hunter. I mean, it's just bananas. You know, the Trump family is getting billions of dollars of loans from foreign governments by using their White House relationships. Any questions? Any questions on that? No, I didn't think so. You, you want to know if the Trump family made any money selling PPE during the pandemic out of the West Wing? Any questions about that? No, I, I didn't think so. Next, Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz points out the hypocrisy of MAGA Republicans and turns the hearing by these MAGA Republicans against them. Play the clip. Additionally, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's come out not just with Twitter, uh, but it's come out that Donald Trump had White House staff call the Disney Corporation to try and censor Jimmy Kimmel because the former president didn't like his jokes. Uh, and to quote Jimmy Kimmel, he, Jimmy Kimmel has responded to this saying that President Karen demanded to speak to my manager in order to censor my free speech through corporate ownership. Uh, additionally, you know, not dealing with government censorship, but it's also come out, Mr. Chairman, that during the last campaign, Fox News 
provided Trump's son-in-law with confidential information uh, about President Biden's ads and President Biden's debate strategy, trying to put their finger on the pulse uh, of the election. And so, listen, you know, I applaud you guys for going back five years because we're going to find out that President Snowflake, uh, through calling Twitter and calling uh, Disney, was trying to hurt people's free speech because, you know, it, it upset him. He didn't like being called names. And so uh, you guys deserve credit that you, you, you want to get to the bottom of who did Donald Trump call, who did Jared Kushner call, who did the chiefs of staff in the Trump administration call to take down Americans' free speech, not just on social media, but also uh, on television. I yield back. And this was just congressional stand-up at this point. Here's Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz. Play the clip. You know, we heard that we should go back to Trump's hiring procedures. Uh, and that, you know, we heard that, you know, we should hire people on merit, you know, like Trump did. Well, it certainly wasn't merit when he hired his children into the White House or his stepson, right? I assume you weren't the one who approved Jared Kushner's security clearance when security experts said he shouldn't have security clearance. I, I assume that wasn't you. Uh, Congressman, I wasn't in the administration at that yeah, time. Yeah, no, I, I know. Um, <clears throat> you know, I assume you also weren't the person who hired General Michael Flynn. You know, that wasn't your hire. We do career uh, civil service and mm. not politicals. Right. You know, I'm not the only one who thought the hiring procedures from the Trump administration were pretty bad. I mean, one of Trump's own allies just said a couple weeks ago that he loves President Trump, but his HR was horrible. In fact, quite frankly, it's President Trump himself that says, quite frankly, his hiring procedures were quite terrible. John Bolton, who worked in the Trump administration, Trump called him a wacko and a sick puppy. Jeff Sessions, who was hired by Donald Trump, was called mentally unqualified. John Kelly, who was hired by Donald Trump, he said, Trump said he was way over his head. Rex Tillerson, who was hired by Donald Trump, he was dumb as a rock. You know, Nick Mulvaney, who was hired by Donald Trump, says, if there's one criticism that I would level against the president is he didn't hire very well. So I I'm, I'm again perplexed. Here we are yet again at another hearing where we want to talk about you know, going back to, you know, Trump's old, good old days, and now we want to bring back Trump's hiring procedures if, because, you know, they're trying to score some points for you. But, you know, HR wasn't really a strong suit in the Trump administration. Don't listen to me. I, I just listened to Donald Trump. He admits the people he hired were terrible. He hates all of them, in fact, which is an unbelievable sort of event. And so with that, I yield back. Thank you. A powerful moment right here by Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz pointing out how these MAGA Republicans want to ban books, but dead kids can't read is what Democratic Congress member Moskowitz says. Here, play the clip. Is there any, any question? I'll yield to anyone on this committee who disagrees that murder in schools is not Murder. I yield. Will you, will you yield? Oh, I'll yield. Yes, please. Yeah, I was when I was in 11th grade and Joe Biden made our schools gun free school zones. One of the students in my school brought three guns to school and our entire school went on lockdown because he was the only person with a gun. There was no good guy with a gun to protect us kids at school. You want to know why the shooter is dead in Nashville? The trans shooter. You want to know why? Because a good guy with a gun killed that woman. She identified as a man. She was mentally ill, probably taking hormones. And she went in and murdered children and adults in this Christian school in Nashville. So if you want to have a good talk about schools and protecting children, we need to talk about protecting our children the same way we protect our president, we protect our celebrities, yeah. we protect Re this building. My time. Okay, Th I'll yield. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, there are six people that are dead in that school, including three children, because you guys got rid of the assault weapons ban. Because you guys made it easy for people who don't deserve to have weapons, who are mentally incapable of having weapons of war, being able to buy those weapons and go into schools. I voted for SROs in my schools in 
in Florida after Parkland. We have SROs on every school. Did the good guys with the guns stop six people from getting murdered? No, but you know what? AR-15s, you know seen what those bullets do to children? You know why you don't hunt with an AR-15 with a deer? Because there's nothing left. And there's nothing left of these kids when people go into school and murder them while they're trying to read. You guys are worried about banning books? Dead kids can't read. And while MAGA Republicans were holding all of these hearings to try to attack the District of Columbia and say that it's dirty and that there's public urination, remember that's what the MAGA Republicans were focused on, here Congress member Moskowitz wants to talk about crime. And since you're speaking about crime, MAGA Republicans, play the clip. You know, speaking of crime, Republican on Republican crime, former President Donald Trump held a rally in Waco, Texas with his Rasputin Ted Nugent. He said the number one national security threat to this great nation isn't Russia or China or DC crime, but is an 81 year old slip and fall survivor in minority leader Mitch McConnell. I'm just wondering if you know, we're gonna find time in between you know, some folks here attending the next rally to celebrating Timothy McVeigh, if we're gonna find time to hold a hearing on mass murder in schools. When are we having that hearing? We wanna talk about crime. Remember when Donald Trump then gave that traveling fascist circus event that he calls a rally in Waco, Texas? This was a hearing that took place shortly thereafter and watch what Congress member Moskowitz had to say. Play the clip. Thank you. Um, and you know, I wanna thank the majority for finding the time to fit this hearing in between attending former President Donald Trump's memorial service to David Koresh just last week, who was a real advocate for young girls uh, in this country. Uh, so uh, my first question uh, to anyone on the panel is, do you think parents in this country as they're putting their young kids into pajamas at night and they're tucking them in to bed. You think they're worried about public urination in Washington, D.C., or you think they're worried about sending their kid to school and their kid not coming home? As a father of two kids who packed them up this morning and sent them to school, I care about making sure they're coming home. Thank you. And Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz points out that his colleagues on the MAGA Republican side had refused to respond to subpoenas as it relates to the insurrection. Play the clip. You know, I'm even hearing some of my colleagues say that they can't get information out of this administration. It's ironic when those same colleagues didn't comply with subpoenas, now complain they can't get information. That's the problem with this place. You, 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 it's not serious. This is no different than COVID. You guys only wanted to talk about COVID under the Biden administration. COVID was a three-year issue. And so I'll end with this, Mr. Chairman. It, it was accused that the Democrats don't want to quit Trump. We'll quit Trump when you quit Trump. We look forward in a bipartisan fashion, quitting Trump together. And then Congress member Moskowitz spitting facts about President Bush, play the clip. Who says it's an important topic. You know, we're 100 plus days into the next Congress. And this committee thought that before we would talk about the Af Afghanistan withdrawal, they thought it was more important to talk about Twitter first. And not only did they think it was more important than the Afghanistan withdrawal, they thought it was more important to talk about the hiring policies of the Biden administration. They also thought it was more important to talk about a laptop that was found at Radio Shack before the Afghan withdrawal. You know, they thought it was more important to talk about the DC government and public urination before the Afghan withdrawal. And so I know this is a serious topic, but just look at the hearings we've had before this one. And so it's tough for us on this side of the aisle to accept that this isn't a serious hearing. This was a 20 year war. It was started by President Bush. You remember President Bush. I know many of you have disowned him because he disagrees with President Trump. But four presidents, 20 years of good decisions, 20 years of bad decisions. You don't want to examine 20 years. You only want to examine like the last week. 
You know, when marriages dissolve after 20 years and they get in front of a judge, they don't just say, you know, everything was great until the last week of marriage. It's crazy. President Trump invited the Taliban to Camp David around the anniversary of 9-11. What? Like, are there any questions about that? Trump released 5,000 prisoners, many that included terrorists, 5,000 Taliban prisoners, many that included terrorists. Next, Congress member Moskowitz reads Trump's greatest hits of COVID misinformation. Play the clip. But also, I think the American people have a right to know why so much misinformation was spread about COVID-19 in this country by President Trump. Let me just read some of the greatest hits from President Trump. China has been working very hard to contain the coronavirus. The United States greatly appreciates their efforts and transparency. It will all work out well. In particular, on behalf of the American people, I want to thank President Xi. Hmm, okay. I just spoke to President Xi last night. And you know, we're working on the problem, the virus. It's a very tough situation. I think he's going to handle it. I think it's handled very well. We're helping wherever we can. Just had a long conversation with the president of China. He's strong, sharp, powerful, focused on leading the counterattack to the coronavirus. He feels they're doing very well, even building hospitals in a matter of days. Great discipline in taking place in China. President leads strongly in a very successful operation. We're working cl closely with China to help. I think China was very, you know, professionally run in a sense. They've got everything under control. I really believe they're going to have it under control very soon. You know, in April, supposedly it's going to die with the hotter weather, and that's a beautiful date to look forward to. But China, I can tell you, is working very hard. We have very few people in this country with COVID, and you know what? They're getting better. They're all getting better. I think the whole situation will work out well. We pretty much shut it down coming from China. You know, we only have 15 people with COVID, and you know, 15 within a couple of days, it's going to go down to zero. That's a pretty good job we've done. It's gonna go away, hopefully at the end of the month, and if not, hopefully soon after that. I could keep going. This goes on and on, and every day it goes on, there were more and more cases in this country. And so we have to find out why the president was spreading that information. And here, Congress member Moskowitz says, oh, this is part one. I can't wait to see part two of this here of these hearings. Play the clip. I I'm pretty sure I just saw, you know, some of my colleagues, sell, you know, going out and, you know, shooting Bud Light cans because, you know, they didn't like what Bud Light was doing. Do, should we have government mandate that they got to go invest in, in Bud Light because we want to support Bud Light? I mean, that's what, that's what you guys are advocating. Uh, I mean, I just, it's really kind of, it's really kind of crazy. And so, you know, I don't know what we're doing here, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, this is part one. There's going to be a part two. I mean, part one was just so fascinating. I can't wait for, for part two. Um, but you know, this committee has not taken any action on gun violence. We want to talk about a deadly weapon. This committee has not looked at all into AR-15s or deadly weapons or school shootings or mass shootings. I mean, you, you, you think parents in this country care about ESG? No, they care about dropping their kid off at a movie theater or at a mall, uh, you know, or at school. Uh, they don't care about ESG. You know, th this is stuff that, like, 10% of Twitter cares about, okay? Uh, and so I just want to know when we're going to get serious here. And Congress member Moskowitz again pointing out here that MAGA Republicans are obsessed with public urination over mass shootings. Play the clip. And so, Mr. Chairman, I, I ask, when is this committee going to have a hearing on gun violence? You weren't here last year. But all the hearings pertain to the Washington Commanders football team. They pertain to the Equal Rights Amendment. They pertain to abortion. They didn't have a single hearing with a single Biden administration official. They didn't have a single hearing on any type of uh, anything relating to how tax dollars were being wasted by this administration. So uh, 
maybe you should take the lead in campaigning for your side of the aisle, and then if you all win the majority, then you can have hearings on the Washington Commanders football team again. No, I, I'm reclaiming my time, Mr. Chairman. You know, that's fine. I, I wasn't here, but, you know, you're in charge now, and mass shootings are completely out of control, and so you have the power to make the decision to decide whether we should have hearings on D.C. public urination or on mass shootings. You're the chairman. I'm just a, a lowly Democratic freshman, and so I implore that this committee start to look at mass shootings and the real weapons that are destroying people's lives, which are AR-15s. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, and remember when MAGA Republicans said that they had a informant, but their fake informant was just missing? Play the clip. I know you got stuff going on. You're trying to find, you know, the fake informant that you've now has gone missing. I know you're busy with that. You know, but I'm hoping that perhaps the Oversight Committee, if they're so worried about, you know, federal overreach, perhaps they can start, you know, being focused on real government oversight. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gimlin yields back before I recognize uh, Ms. Bobert. With respect to the missing informant, uh, just so you know, just to clarify, the, the Grassley whistleblower is alive and well. And Congress member Moskowitz mocking these MAGA Republicans over their gas stove obsession. Play the clip. You know, and it's warm and you're in the kitchen and you stare into the knobs of your beautiful stainless steel beauty. I, I got it. I, I get the bravado. You can, we can pry your gas stove from your cold, dead hands or give me my gas stove or give me death. You know, I have a six burner double oven range that sits on legs. I mean, I'm, I miss her right now as, as we're talking about, about it. And, and so I think because it's a two-party system. I think when my colleagues across the aisle, the, the other party, show leadership, the leadership of our times that is desperately needed, Democrats like myself should, should commend them. Uh, and, and I want to apologize on behalf of the Democratic Party that we have decided to put kids, kids' safety in their neighborhoods, from getting gunned down in movie theaters or grocery stores or school churches or synagogues, we as Democrats have clearly lost our way, that we are not focused on appliances. And so we're finally seeing our friends across the aisle stand up for parents all across the country as they tuck their kid in at night, as they dress them for school in the morning, as they are worried that they may not come home. My friends across the aisle are telling those parents, you can breathe a sigh of relief. That the grand appliance party is going to make sure your gas stove goes nowhere. You, you might own a small business, and you are worried about how you're going to pay your employees if we default. The good news for you today is that if you have to shutter your business, because the country defaults, your gas stove will still be there. And so, you know, I look forward to the legislation of our time, the appliance bill of rights that might come in front of this committee. Another uh, complete, a great one here by Congress member Moskowitz mocking MAGA Republicans again on their war on gas stoves. Play the clip. Obviously, we have one, not just one, but two gas stove bills. So my Second Amendment uh, would give gas stoves, I think, the honor that they deserve. Uh, you know, a stainless steel, six-burner, double oven in Statuary Hall. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we have statues there that are made of marble and bronze, but we don't have anything of stainless steel. And so I think this could be uh, the first one. Amendment number three helps ensure that the hours of hard work uh, do not go by the wayside on this issue. And so I propose creating a position in the U.S. Department of Energy for the sole purpose of fighting the war on gas stoves. This amendment would create this position in the department, the Supreme Allied Gas Commander, a position that young boys and girls can one day aspire to, just as they're sitting in class, maybe reading a book, hopefully a book that wasn't banned, or sitting in class, hopefully being safe, they could, they could think about being uh, one day the Supreme Allied Gas Commander. Now switching over to H.R. 1615, this amendment honors, uh, uh, honors this amendment by also changing its name to Make Appliances Great Again. 
Many of you already have the hats and shirts and flags and boats, so I figured we would just make it easy uh, so that you could show uh, your support uh, for this amendment. And if you don't like that slogan, because that, you know, something of four years ago, uh, we can, my last amendment, uh, uh, my second amendment on that one changes the name uh, to uh, Sto Stoves Over Gun Violence Act. In 2020, there were more than 40 million gas stoves, which is only about 10% of the amount of guns uh, that are on the streets. And so uh, I, I thought that maybe we could show parents really what our priority is, which is stoves uh, over gun violence. And finally, Mr. Chairman, amendment number five to H.R. 1615, uh, to kind of put us back on the right track, is uh, this amendment uh, would, would, would take all the funds that are being used for the purpose of uh, this gas stove thing and redirect them uh, for gun violence uh, prevention efforts. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, uh, I appreciate uh, the committee considering my amendments. I yield back the balance of my time. And here, Congress Member Moskowitz again saying that... Uh, you do realize, MAGA Republicans, that you don't have to take the money from the big corporations. Like, it's not mandatory. Here, play the clip. Let's not forget that some of our colleagues, you know, went on camera when Sasha Baron Cohen got into their office okay. and said that they think kindergartners should have guns. We, we heard the, that this is all about big corporations, that big corporations now like regulation. Well, by the way, just a little public service announcement. If you're mad at big corporations, you don't have to take their money anymore. That's not like a mandatory thing. Congress member Moskowitz pointing out that Donald Trump uh, stole and concealed nuclear codes. Play the clip. You know, and all we want to do is go back to Trump. I mean, every hearing, it's like, ah, oh, just if we could just go back to what Trump did, you know, the loser of the 2020 election, the loser of the Georgia Senate races, the loser of the 2018 midterms, by the way, just to jog your memory, the Trump administration finalized more federal rules in the last year of its administration than any other final year of any presidency in American history, more than Obama. I know it's inconvenient timing, but perhaps we actually need more regulation with presidents taking nuclear codes and cuddling with them and showering with them in their homes. And Congress member Moskowitz pointing out that the MAGA Republicans' supposed whistleblower about Hunter Biden, who they've been obsessed with uh, for years now, and all they talked about in 2023 was Hunter and Biden, how their uh, so-called whistleblower or informant was actually an indicted foreign agent. Play the clip. But they're focused on the audit of the Pentagon. Can you imagine if someone audited this committee? Oh, oh wait, I, I have that audit of this committee. <clears throat> Actually, it's in form of an indictment. That's the audit of this committee. It's an indictment by the Department of Justice because this committee is focusing on working with foreign agents, right? They want to talk about national security. That's why you guys are here. It's about national security. But the main committee is working with an indicted Chinese agent who does business with the Iranian regime and is an illegal arms dealer to Libya. All of this in order to own Hunter Biden. That's how far they've stooped. It reads like a 007 movie, this indictment, except they're working with the villain. You know, that's why I've sent a letter to the China Select Committee, the chairman of that committee, to open up into a, an investigation into what's happening in oversight, because I'm deeply worried about whether the CCP has manipulated the information that's been provided to this committee through their foreign agent that they're working with, and the information that they're then providing to the American people. It's also why I've sent a letter to the chairman of foreign affairs and the chairman of homeland security, because I need to know, and the American people need to know, they have a right to know, whether the indicted foreign agent, the illegal arms salesman who is working within the Iranian regime, who is a supporter of terrorism around the world, that's who they're working with. <clears throat> we need to know whether they have jeopardized homeland security in their search to help Donald Trump in his reelection. I yield back. Congress member Moskowitz pointing out when the National Defense Authorization Act was held up because of culture war issues by MAGA Republicans. Play the clip. So we're talking about the NDAA <clears throat> while this hearing's going on, supporting our defense, supporting our country, keeping our military superiority uh, over China. It passed 58 to one in committee. Bipartisan, how it has always been and how it should be. Except now it's held hostage. It's held hostage over the culture war, right? 
<clears throat> it's not about defense, it's not about protecting the American people, no, it's about abortion or defending the Confederacy based on amendments that my colleagues have filed. Or it's about books again, we're back to books. Or it's about stopping mitigation to climate change. Anyone right now who's current, currently experiencing record flooding or record heat, <clears throat> they're not worried about defending the country, no, they're worried about stopping mitigation to climate change. <clears throat> the Senate's gonna kick all this back to us. They're gonna wipe all this culture war nonsense out. And so this is just theater, it's not about defending, defending the country. They're holding up 250 nominees in the Senate to our military. My colleagues across the aisle are doing that. We can't appoint the head of the Marine Corps because of the culture wars. Hasn't happened since 1910. In October, when we're gonna see the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff probably retire, nope, we won't be able to appoint that person either based on this nonsense if it continues. Congress member Moskowitz pointing out the scoreboard we should all be talking about. Play the clip. Here's the score. Gun violence hearings in the 118th Congress, zero. Gas stoves, three. That's all you need to know about what's happening in the 118th Congress. I yield back. Chair rec now recognizes our good friend from Kentucky, Chairman Comer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate your leadership on this issue. And I have to respond to the gun violence. What good does it do to have gun laws on the books when you waive uh, gun penalties for privileged white children of high elected public officials. We yield. I'll yield. yield. Mr. Chairman, uh, there were 17 people killed at my high school in my I, it, I it, it, in, it, it, in, in my neighborhood, and so let's not make gun violence. I'm not making uh, gun. Uh, I uh, yield my time back. You're, okay. You asked a credible question. You're not serious. So, Congress Member Moskowitz pointing out the hypocrisy of MAGA Republicans focusing on things like a $4,000 loan that was repaid by Hunter Biden to Joe Biden when Joe Biden was not in office for a car, where you have Jared Kushner getting billions of dollars from the Saudis and other Middle East nations and he held an official position at the White House and couldn't get a security clearance for it. Play the clip. Heard a lot about the Bidens, the Bidens, the Biden family, Biden associates, right? Bidens, plural, the S, what does the apostrophe mean? But not Joe Biden. Didn't hear a lot about Joe Biden. Why? Because he didn't do anything. This has nothing to do with him. You know, my colleagues talked about foreign countries, you know, foreign entities trying to make it all scary for the American people. Of course, President Trump got $5.4 million from the Chinese while he was president because they were leasing space in Trump Tower. He goes out and air kisses President Xi, totally perfect. Jared Kushner gets $2 billion from the Saudis even though he oversaw Mideast peace, totally kosher. Ivanka Trump, you know, she's doing business with the Chinese while she's working in the White House, totally beautiful, right? Why do I bring that up? They want to say you have credibility. The problem is they have none. They have no credibility. And because you're here at their behest, their lack of their credibility questions your credibility. And Congress member Moskowitz at another hearing driving that home, driving that point home even more, talking about how, yeah, these MAGA Republicans want to say the, uh, you know, want to go on Twitter and be keyboard warriors and act all tough, but they're okay with Kushner getting billions of dollars from the Saudis, play this clip. We sit here, we hear our colleagues bring up certain things like, oh, the, the Biden family took money from a foreign entity, right? And it's just like, well, really? I mean, do, do, they, do they really not know that Jared Kushner took $2 billion from the Saudis? I mean, by the way, they go on Twitter and blame the Saudis for 9-11, but then Jared Kushner, who, by the way, was not a wealth expert before he worked in the White House, nor was he a Middle East expert before he worked there, gets $2 billion from the Saudis, and they don't, they don't have any questions. And, and I just think that the American people recognize that they have no credibility. It's why the stuff they've been selling in this committee for nine months has not translated, which is why they got to start it all over again. Uh, it, it just... You, you don't have any credibility when you only want to look at, at one side of the coin.
And here, Congress member Moskowitz confronting James Comer. You want to go on Fox and spread innuendo? Let me show you. Let me give you a taste of your own medicine, James Comer. Play this clip. All I'm saying, Mr. Chairman, is you may have done nothing wrong. No, but you tweeted oh, but, that oh, I did. I'm, I'm claiming my time, Mr. Chairman. All I'm, there's a story out there, right? Because we believe everything in the media. Like when you go on Fox News and say things and everyone says that they're true with innuendos and ifs and maybe the Biden family, the crime family, all this nonsense. But when it happens to you, it's fake news. And what I'm saying is there so should you be admit the it's same. Fake no, news. I'm claiming my time, Mr. Chairman. There should be the same standard. You said at the beginning of this hearing, the Biden administration can't have it both ways. Neither can you, Mr. Chairman. I yield my time back. Thank you. And of course here, James Comer just completely lost it. Uh, and and uh, couldn't handle Jared Moskowitz uh, anymore. Play this clip. But you and Goldman, who is Mr. Trust Fund, continue to try Recla to reclaiming my time. No, I'm Re not going to give you your time back. We can stop the clock. Re you all continue to. You look like a Smurf here, just going around and all this stuff. Now, listen, M Mr. Chairman, you no, have. No, I'm going to tell you no, no, something. Hold on, if we're, you if we're not on time, we you disinformation. You, you, you have you gone on TV and you said the president did something you illegal. You're doing stuff with your brother. The American people have the same questions. Why should they believe you? Why should they believe you? Why should they believe you? There's, there's a different rule for the president. There's a different rule for you. Why should they believe you what you're saying, Mr. Chairman? Why? You go on Fox News and say loans you and deals are a way to evade taxes. We don't know that's what you're doing or not. We don't know. We have no idea. We're supposed to take your word for it. But when the president well, you've says already something, been proven not a liar, Mr. Moskowitz. What's that? You've already been proven a liar. Today. Who's proven me a liar? You? Yes. Your word means well, nothing, Mr. Chairman. Go to my hometown. There's a camera crew there today, an opposition research crew there today. Mr. To Chairman, this seems, to have gotten under your, this seems to have gotten under your skin. I'll pay I mean, for your I, ticket. I, I, I think the American people have lots of questions, Mr. Chairman, and perhaps you should sit maybe for a deposition. I, would, I will be questions. happy. And as a result of all of this, when Hunter Biden agreed to testify publicly before this committee, James Comer, right? He's been saying, Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden this, Hunter Biden that. Oh, we want Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden said, okay, I will testify publicly. First, let me play you this clip. Remember when James Comer went on that right-wing Benny Johnson show, whatever the heck it's called, and said that um, they would welcome these witnesses to testify publicly, and they have all of the evidence, is what Comer said. Here, play the clip. We have mountains of evidence, and now we're ready to bring them in. We're, we're in the downhill phase of this investigation now because we have so many documents, and, and we can bring these people in for depositions or committee hearings, whichever they choose, and we can ask these questions with evidence. Right, so Hunter Biden then agrees to testify publicly before the committee. And James Comer goes, nope, we don't want you publicly under oath with no conditions attached. We want a secret deposition. And why? Because of all of those clips I just showed you. James Comer is afraid of Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz. And by the way, here's James Comer giving away the game that he's afraid to hold public hearings because of Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz. Play the clip. Uh, but, you, you know, as these congressional investigation, these hearings go, uh, you've got uh, 20 members on each side that have five minutes each. We have tens of thousands of pages of documents where we need to sit down and ask specific substantive questions without filibustering, without interruption, without going five minutes back and forth with, with Jamie Raskins and Dan Goldman and, and uh, little Moskowitz jumping up and down, uh, fi uh, filing motions and trying to disrupt the committee hearings. And folks, normally as a freshman member of Congress, your time is limited, your power is limited. So the fact that Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz is so in the head of the chair of the oversight committee, the chair of the committee, that the chair is afraid to hold a public hearing with Hunter Biden agreeing to be there because he's afraid of Jared Moskowitz, the pro-democracy warrior, folks, is why Jared Moskowitz, congratulations, you have won the Midas Touch Network pro-democracy freshman member of Congress of the year. I know that is a very, very uh, big honor uh, 
<laughs> so congratulations, Congress member Moskowitz, for that body of work. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. And subscribe. We're on our way to 2 million subscribers thanks to your support. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.